We're going to go ahead and commence with the third and final video of today. If you find this information beneficial, if it's helping you uh, become enlightened, uh, please feel free to donate to my Stop the Corruption um, uh, donation uh, page on PayPal. And uh, thanks for your uh, contribution in advance. I will continue to do more videos. And if I can get some donations, it helps, uh, helps me in my, uh, my path um, to helping you guys. Uh, I will be doing videos on federal, in federal indictments, how to do federal indictments, um, how to move your court uh, the way that you want to move the court as a prosecutor. Because when you bring a claim, you are the prosecutor, okay? Um, so I'm going to do some more videos with you guys later on. But any donations you could give, even if it's a penny, it helps. 350 million Americans, about 7.5 billion people worldwide. A lot of this information does not just pertain to the United States uh, Incorporated or the United States of America, the Republic. Uh, but it, it, it applies worldwide. Um, so... In particular, the the uh, stuff that we're about to talk about now is a global thing, okay? Uh, so tracking the birth certificate scheme and how the unenlightened are picked clean. When a child is born within, within the corporate United States, a record of live birth form, a commercial bill of laden, or similar is issued by the hospital. The father and mother sign this hospital form a receipt for the goods as the parents uh, manufactured entitled holders owners of the goods child the state uh, the transfer of the property rights the child's rights to the state is uh, accepted by the signature of their government agent okay that's the original trustee of said account okay the sesta kv act of 1666 it's where all this goes back to and uh, so the state registrar, and you will find them on every last one of your birth certificates, ladies and gentlemen. The mother signs the birth certificate as the informant, not the mother. Uh, the father, they don't allow to sign the actual uh, document that they create because they need the child to be a bastard. So the state can then come in, you know, essentially as the father. Um, for lack of a better depictor descriptor, we'll go with that. So, um, the transfer of the property rights, the child's rights to the state is accepted by the signature of the government agent, the state registrar, most often. A state licensed physician. The parents have unknowingly pledged their child futures, uh, future to the, and labor to the government and signed a presumed contract. This converts the legal status of their child to the to that of chattel property, okay? Now, chattel is very close to cattle, right? And how do we maintain cattle? For those of us out here in the Midwest, uh, it's very apparent that when um, we have insemination of a cow and we have a byproduct is is the calf, and, and now we have assurance. We have a surety. We've created something, haven't we? <clears throat> and through the miracle of life, we can then go to the bank and say we have uh, 200 head of cattle, uh, 75 head of them are impregnated, and we need to borrow a little bit of money so we can feed these babies to get them to the market. So we have, in a sense, created a, a situation where we've created a bond or a surety, a promise that we can deliver said product, um, and then they take into uh, consideration the loss of life, how many we may lose, uh, and, and then they go ahead and assess it and are willing to extend our own credit to us, which is rather odd when you understand the whole scheme of it, because you're really not borrowing anything from a bank. Unknowingly pledged their child futures and labors to the government and signed a presumed contract. This converts the legal status of their child to that of chattel um, property in um, permanently uh, indentured, permanently indentured servitude. See preface, preface part one. The state becomes the de facto holder of the rights to the child collateral. Now, rights 
are property, ladies and gentlemen. Rights are property, okay? And property has what? Property has value. Next, the hospital sends, and, and let me go into the hospital. The hospital is actually a, a military-run organization. Um, so when you birth your child at home with a midwife, you're not doing it in a military uh, venue. When you do it at the hospital, it's part of a military venue, and they are going to collect on that. They're going to create that chattel paper. Sends, uh, next, the hospital sends the record to the live birth uh, to the State Bureau of Vital Statistics, sometimes called the Department of Health and Human uh, Rehabilitative Services, Health and Human Services, DHHS, um, Health and Human Resources. In some states, each state is required to supply the federal government with birth, death, and health statistics. Um, the state agency that receives the records of live birth title keeps it... Uh, and then issues the birth certificate, the BC. <clears throat> the birth certificate is a commercial instrument, document, evidence that the state is holding the title ownership to the child. Holding the title is not the same as having possession of the property. Okay, so for uh, to break it down in layman's terms and a paraphrase, you go to the bank, you get a loan, you ascertain a truck, right? You physically have the truck, but they have the value because... They have the title, okay? And because they have the title, the, the truck is really of no significance because all the value is in said document in the fictional realm, okay? So to help you guys wrap your heads around what's transpiring is the paper is the value, ladies and gentlemen. It's not the actual physical asset as much as it is the documentation, okay? Possession of the property. So the state is the holder of the instrument. Um, but not the holder in due course, because you, of course, are the holder in due course. This is all based on the uh, presumed uh, acceptance of the contract recorded of the live birth, record of the live birth between the manufactured parents and the purchaser state. The parents are not aware of this assumed contract because it was never re revealed to them, uh, nor was full disclosure provided. Now, the reason full disclosure wasn't provided was obviously so they could run their scheme. But let me take it back even further, because I want to show you where the state created joinder between you, your mate, otherwise legally known as your spouse, and created joinder between your two corporate fictions that they created in your benefit, mind you, what happens is when you get married, you don't realize this, but when you get married before the eyes of the state and not the eyes of God, which is where I've come to the conclusive determination that the word legal means the undoing of God's law, we get married before the eyes of God. We don't need the state's permission and we don't need the state as a witness to the marriage. But nevertheless, we have been duped into believing that somehow the state needs to be a party to our marriage. So what happens is they take your birth certificate, they take your spouse's birth certificate or your mate's certificate, and what you do when you get married is you create joinder between those two identifying documents, okay? And when you do that, anything that is created between those two documents, between you and your spouse, the state is now a party to. Because when you got married, they didn't disclose this to you. But when you married your spouse, the state became a party to the wedding. The state became a party to the marriage. The state joined you in joinder. So anything you create, they now have an interest in, don't they? That's right. Because you created something and they were a party to it. And now they have a beneficial interest in your offspring. What you create, what the two corporations create in joinder is a byproduct. And that byproduct is because you're unlearned and don't know to go put your baby's name in the newspaper and stuff and claim the life that you've created. The state does it, you know, because it's abandoned property. And so that's how we get into this scrupled up mess um, is through these contracts and the marriage license is, is, is something that if you're going to go get married, go get married be before the eyes of the Lord and your friends and your family and have a good celebration. Don't involve the state. It just, it, it's never a good idea. Um, so, uh, presumed contracts, 
this converts the legal status of their child to that of chattel. Uh, I'm sorry, I skipped. Okay. Next is the hospital, and it creates the record of the vital statistics. Each state is required to supply the federal government with birth, death, and uh, health statistics. The state agency receives the record of living birth, or live birth, title, keeps keeps it to, uh, and then issues a birth certificate of B.C. The B.C. is commercial instrument document evidence that the state is holding the title ownership to the child, holding the title is not the same as having um, possession of the property. So the state is the holder of the instrument, but not the holder in due course. This all is based upon the presumed acceptance of the contract recorded record of live birth between the manufactured parents and the purchaser state. The parents are not aware of this uh, assumed contract because it, is, it was never dis revealed to them nor was full disclosure made in good faith. So they don't object to what they uh, don't know. The current holder of your commercial birth document uh, receipt is available to capitalize on it because of your failure to instruct the holder of to do otherwise. Due to your silence and lack of legal action, certificate noun, Middle English, certificate from Middle French, from medieval Latin certificatum, um, from Latin, late Latin uh, neuter of uh, certificus, uh, past uh, part, participle of certificare, to certify 15th century doc, a document evidencing ownership or debt. This birth certificate is issued to the state. Uh, is then registered with the U.S. Department of Commerce through their agency, the U.S. Census Bureau, who is responsible to collect vital statistics for all the state. The word register in commercial law does not mean that um, does not mean that your name was merely noted in a register registry or book for reference uh, purposes. When a birth certificate is registered with the U.S. Department of Commerce, it means that the child's persona named on it is become a surety or a grantor as collateral for a commercial loan. Registered Security Bond, uh, Merriam-Webster's Dictionary of Law, 1996. Security, something as a mortgage or mortgage or collateral that is provided to make certain the fulfillment of an obligation example used his uh, his property as surety for a loan surety evidence of indebtedness ownership or the right of, to ownership bond as usually a uh, formal written agreement by which a person undertakes to perform a certain act as fulfill the obligation of a contract with the conditions that failure to perform or abstain will uh, obligate the person to pay some certain of money or will result in the forfeiture of money put up by the person or surety. One who acts as um, a surety, an interest-bearing document giving evidence of a debt issued by the government, body, or corporation that is sometimes secured by a lien on property and is often designed to take care of a particular financial need. Surety, the person who has pledged him or herself to pay back money or perform a certain action if the principle to the contract fails, as collateral and as part of the original contract. Doi Himai's Law Dictionary. Formal engagement, as a pledge given for the fulfillment of an undertaking one who promises to answer for the debt or default or another under the uniform commercial code however a surety includes a grantor and the two terms are generally interchangeable uh, merriam's webster's dictionary of law 1996 grantor a person who pledges collateral for the contract of another but separately as a part of an independently contracted within the obligee of the original contract, Durheim's, Dur, Durheim's Law Dictionary. It is not difficult to see, uh, to see that the birth certificate is a document evidencing the debt the moment it is issued. This is how it works. One, 
once each state uh, has registered by commercial bulk transfer, the birth certificate with the U.S. Uh, Department of Commerce, the U.S. Department of Treasury, then issues Treasury securities in the form of Treasury bonds, notes, and bills using the B.C. as sureties or grantors for these uh, purported sureties. Now, one of the things that evidences this is when we look at the dollar bills and we're looking at, like, say, the um, the Social Security card, uh, there, on the back there's a letter with a series of numbers, and you can find your, uh, your Social Security number on the back. You can find it on a dollar bill, okay? Ladies and gentlemen, they're using these things as sureties, as bonds, as promise to pay, things of that nature. This means that the bankrupt corporate USA can, uh, uh, can grantee to the purchaser of their securities, the lifetime labor of all Americans as collateral for payment. Isn't it nice to know that when you were born, with da within days you became the collateral for the corporation U.S. debt loans through the assumed contract your parents thought was nothing more than record of live birth. But wait, the chain of events gets even more interesting. Who purchases these treasury securities? Nearly all of the purchased by nearly are all are purchased by the commercial institutions and brokerage firms on behalf of their in individual clients. These purchasers are called commercial book entry transactions, whereby the individual purchaser never receives a paper stock certificate, because we are preferred stock, ladies and gentlemen. Follow very closely and see if you uh, can notice the monopoly and identify of the world power broker unfolding here keyword are underlined the commercial book entry system is operated exclusively by the private owned federal reserve system formerly the federal reserve bank as physical agents of the u.s treasury department all these securities are recorded in the commercial book entry system as book entry issue held for the uh, amount of the depository institutions the exclusive depository institution is the Depository Trust Company, otherwise known as the DTC, a privately owned trust company bank who ma maintains records identifying the individual's beneficial owners of securities that the DTC holds holders in its accounts in the commercial book entry system. The Depository Trust Company is an operating a uh, unit of the Federal Reserve System or owned by the Federal Reserve System. The Depository Trust Company transfers all the securities to their owner, private bank, uh, private, excuse me, to their own private holding company at CEDE and Company, so SETI Company. SETI Company is the holder of nearly $20 trillion of stocks and bonds. The Federal Reserve System uses... Uh, these treasury securities uh, it holds as collateral to print and issue Federal Reserve notes, which are further debt obligations. A contract can only be valid if it follows all the rules and pr uh, processes of law that create it. One of the main elements of rules of the contract law states that all parties must understand the scope, nature, term, and the that excuse me and that fails to be entered into by mutual good faith with full disclosure of the terms and conditions to both parties and consent by all parties is void ab initio from the beginning whenever the element of good faith disclosure and or consent are missing any contract can automatically be ruled null and void if the deceived or uh, defrauded party enforces the rules of law, once again, silence is default. If you say nothing, you can default, or you have defaulted. UCC 1-203, Obligations of Good Faith, every contract or duty within the code imp imposes an obligation of good faith in its uh, performance or enforcement. Where you are... Uh, were you aware of the implied and presumed contract between you and the real party of interest, the owners of the Federal Reserve System? 
in all law and truth? It doesn't exist, does it? UCC 1201 definitions presumption or presumption or presumed means that the trier of the fact must find the uh, extenses of the facts presumed unless until evidence is introduced which would support the finding of its non-existence. Where are where all terms and conditions disclosed to you at uh, at birth or time since then? Of course not. Legally, once you rebut the presumptions by affidavit for failure to disclose the terms and conditions or obtain mutual consent, the contract automatically becomes null and void. Such a contract as this, which has unlawfully bound uh, the average American to it, is considered fraud or misrepresentation, for example. UCC 1-103, Supplementary General Principle of Law Applicable. Unless displaced by a particular provision of this code, the, uh, the principle of law and equity, including the law of merchants <clears throat> and the law of relative to, uh, relative to uh, capacity to contract, principles and agents, estoppel, fraud, misrepresentation, duress, coercion, mistake, bankruptcy, or other validating or invalidating causes shall supplement its provisions. As you can see, the major flaw in all artificial government and their laws is the absence of genuine and legal agreement between the parties due to the failure to fully disclose. Now, have, have a meeting of the minds and lack mutual good faith. In their presumption that you have agreed to a bona fide contract with the government, you were never informed of the full terms and conditions of the purported contract. The reason this uh, situation uh, could exist in the first place is due to the fact that the American people have been fooled themselves, lied to themselves, and failed to communicate with themselves. They have put aside their word, excuse me, they have put aside... Um, their holy Bibles and replace the true law of God with the law of men. The world of man, man's laws and government was brought about by the very people who are now servants to the system. Since Lincoln's war, Christian Americans have lived in the fear of speaking against the speaking out against the wrongs that they see taking place. According to the universal principles and foundation uh, of contract law, see uh, background part one. In the absence of the genuine agreement, no contract exists. What does uh, what does exist is nothing more than a presumption of contract based on the deceived party, you, having foolishly trusted in the government. Although fraud is unlawful, it is not illegal in artificial um, state uh, ru rulership system. Keep in mind once again that all governments are uh, structurally fraudulent due to the uh, origins of their artificial conception. Based on the premise of evidence, it is an obvious fact that fraud must be legal as government are able to uh, judge themselves as legal in the first place. In other words, the existence of government is a legality of Fraud ab initio, holder in due course in commerce. Okay, it's, it's clear. I've I've already been through this stuff. Sorry, guys. It was just repeating. Um, so while well, we got some time before I go, take care of some things. I wanted to, if I got it in here. I do have it in here. All right. One second here. All right. So we do a thing called the Affidavit of Life, Proof of Claim, the Executor Letters. Uh, there's a number of processes that I have chosen to execute after being fully informed um, and gaining a lot of knowledge. And it took a lot of time and a, a lot of wonderful men and women to teach me this stuff. But 
Okay, the Sesta K V Act of 1666, Chapter 11, an act for redress of uh, inconveniences by want of proof of the decease of person beyond the sea or abs absenting themselves upon whose life lives estate do depend. Okay. When, when you're reading this, <clears throat> you'll notice that uh, they spell things differently than we do here in America. Uh, for example, labor is L-O-B, uh, excuse me, yeah, L-A-B-O-U-R over there in the foreign countries, and we spell it actually incorrectly, okay? So we're not being taught how to read and write, ladies and gentlemen. We, we live in Babylon, uh, where everything is not what it seems. Um, but the importance of claiming your life uh, is, is written in here in the Sesta K V Act, which was a, a trust essentially created for all of mankind. And, it, of course, it was created after the Unum Sanctum um, and things of that nature. Uh, and so you are all a party to the Sesta K V Act. You're all a party to the Sesta K V Trust. And the importance of filing your UCC-1 authenticating your birth certificate in the county you were born in, the state you were born in, and also the federal government is so important. I can't express to you enough how important it is to bring back your allodial title to oneself with your uh, equitable title and, and combining the two and being the owner of yourself. Um, the ecclesiastical law, all this stuff. Think about it, ladies and gentlemen. What's the first thing they do to you when you're born? Well, first they slap you around and make sure you're going to cry, which is a bunch of satanic crap, if you ask me. And then they turn around and put your feet, your soul, on a document that belongs to the Vatican, ladies and gentlemen. It all ties back to the Vatican. And so you want to claim back ecclesiastically your soul, your mind, your body, your spirit. You need You need all that to be complete as a man. And you need to be able to... Uh, operate in commerce and the way that you're going to be able to do that is by studying so I hope these videos are helping you guys out I hope that you now know uh, how important it is to go get your trade name and the state that you were born in and the all caps letter and to create your commercial security agreement um, your private security agreement your hold harmless agreement uh, your indemnity bond um, the the UCC one and the non UCC filing to create a lien against your ends legus person. Okay. And we could really put an end to the, um, the overall debt that they allege we owe the national debt. And we can put a stop to that. If you learn how to operate properly, uh, we could eliminate that $21 trillion debt because it really doesn't exist. Um, but if we learn how to operate in commerce, we can set off and offset and discharge these debts. Your mortgage is paid for from the day you sign it. Your electric bill is already paid for. The prosecuting attorney or DA in your county every year in between October 15th and September 31st does a chattel count. And he's counting all the chattel that live in his little area. You just think about each county being a fenced off little farm and your, uh, your DA or your prosecuting attorney is the barnyard pimp for all his chattel. And he goes around, does a head count of who's pregnant, who's not, who's this, who's that, whatever. And what he does is submit to the federal government how much money that they're going to need in the county, how much credit they're going to need. And they, they, they take their chattel and they count them all up. And they go, we got this much chattel and we want this much credit. Can you give us that much credit? And they're pledging your futures to keep their country, to keep their county going, to keep things rocking and rolling. The illusion of FRNs and paying all these debts is absurd because you cannot pay a debt with a debt. And that's exactly what an FRN is. So when you start to have an ascension of the mind and you realize what's really going on, you're going to learn how to file proper IRS documents and you're going to pay your electric bill that way. You're going to offset and discharge it. And then they're going to turn around and send you a reimbursement check for doing the work for managing the estate. You're going to get paid. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, they're going to send you your credits. Henry Ford said it best. If the American people that work on my assembly line knew tomorrow how the banking system truly operates and functions, I wouldn't have one man standing on my assembly line tomorrow. 
What he meant by that is everybody on that assembly line paid themselves because at the end of the year, he 1099 OID'd everything that he ever spent and he got it all back. Those employees paid themselves to be there and to top it all off because they were using FRN notes and they entered into a contract by using that open-ended contract. Now they were responsible for paying taxes as well as a user fee. When in all actuality, they should have been filing uh, W-9s and 1099s. You should be filing a W-9 uh, W with the bank. Uh, you, should be, you should be 1099-ing them every year. Uh, you are depositing. You are giving the bank money for nothing. And when you do that, you should be asking for the W-9. You should be saying, I need your W-9 because I incomed you. And because I incomed you, I need to report it. So... You know, just things to think about. And uh, I enjoy having you guys with me. And if you found this information beneficial, uh, I'll post a place where you can donate if you like. Um, just trying to help the masses wake up because it's not easy and it's really hard. But know that you're not alone. Thank you for following along and stay tuned. I still got some fun court dates coming up with a bunch of derelict duty officials who uh, probably have skid marks in their shorts by now. <laughs> so anyway... Having fun, enjoy life, I gotta go feed some cattle.